All right, here we are, the final match of the Australian Open. And I think it's a great matchup, Daniel Medvedev versus Novak Djokovic. I was watching some highlights. In fact, uh, as we get talking here a little bit, I'll, I'll see if we can play it here so we can just kind of talk and watch them play. And it's a pretty even matchup, guys. It's, it's uh, you know, it's they kind of very, very much as far as their consistency, their ability to also do uh, offense, their incredible gets on defense, their passing shots, their touch, their all-court game, um, their they're just competitive nature, their mental toughness. It's all there for both players. And uh, it's going to be all about who can execute a little bit better. I think that we all agree. Let me know as you guys come on in and we're live right now. Uh, leave your pick. Put your pick in writing. Who's going to win? Put your money where your mouth is. Who is going to win? Diego, I'm very excited Diego's on. Uh, Diego's coming on. He's saying we're in for a legendary final. It's going to be five sets. Diego, okay, now you got to follow up who is the pick. I want to see who's going to be the first one to put your pick in. Remember, guys, when you put your pick in, and if you're right, you can always come back and show your friends that you are correct so you can say that you called it and you have proof here in writing. And if you're wrong, you just don't tell your friends about it. You just don't tell them that you made a pick. But uh, it's a tough match to pick. I mean, there are so many reasons why you should go with Djokovic. Uh, first of all, at the Australian Open. He barely ever loses. Uh, the last time he faced Rafa, he destroyed Rafa. And who, this is pretty good. We want to talk about this. Who did Rafa beat in the semifinals? Who did he beat? He beat Sissipas. After Sissipas did what? After Sissipas beat Federer. And so Sissipas was feeling great. I remember that. He was feeling very confident, feeling great, just like he was this tournament. Played Rafa in the semis. And then Rafa just destroyed him. And Sissy Paz said in this press conference, because they asked, well, who do you think is going to win? You think Medvedev's going to win or Djokovic going to win? He says, well, I think Medvedev can win. He's like, but what do I know? Because last time that Rafa beat me here, I thought he was going to win. I, he was playing so good against me. I thought he was going to go in and, and beat up on Djokovic. And the opposite happened. So even though Djokovic uh, has his hands cut out, I mean, his work for cut out for him with, uh, with Medvedev, um, you know, don't be surprised if he shows up big. He shows up big at all the majors, but especially the Australian Open seems to be where he brings out his best, best tennis. So let's read some comments here. Uh, yeah, and Alex is kind of picking up what I'm saying. Joker has the experience. Med is highly motivated. There's not a call there, though. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, Brian says Djokovic physically in good condition, question mark. Well, I, th I think, yeah, the, so we were worried about his midsection. Something was going on there. There might have been a, a, a tear, uh, a strain. Who knows what it was? But I'll tell you, once he played Alexander Zverev, all the questions were answered for me. Not only did he win a very physical match, remember he had an absolute temper tantrum and decided to bust his racket into the racket, into the, into the I'm sorry, into the ground. Uh, and once he did that, I thought, okay, well, you don't do that if you're severely hurt because <laughs> that took a lot of, you know, ripping in the core section to be able to do that. So I think, I think Djokovic is fine. And he had just what the doctor ordered in the semifinals, got out of there in three sets, built his confidence up, said his timing felt good. Djokovic is feeling good. He's not going to be able to use an injury as an excuse. It's just going to be that Medvedev plays better. Medvedev is one of the few players, I think, let me know what you guys think, Medvedev is one of the few players in the world where when Djokovic is playing his best, I think at Medvedev at his best, not that it's a shoe and not that he's going to win 10 out of 10 times, but Medvedev at his best, I believe, can beat Djokovic at his best. I, I think he can do it. I think he's got the game to do it. Let's see. We've got another. Djokovic is going down. Djokovic is furiously motivated. Yeah, we have to. I mean, you can't underscore how much Djokovic wants to win this. You know, every time he's in a Grand Slam final and he's not looking across the net at Nadal or Federer, he's thinking this is a chance to catch up and they can't do anything about it. They're out of the tournament. So if Djokovic wins tonight, he's at 18. So that's looking really, really good for him. Then he's got a shot at the French Open, got to the finals of the French Open this past year. 
Uh, Nadal embarrassed him, so he'll be w wanting some redemption and wanting to get one step closer. You still got to think Nadal is the favorite at the French Open, but many people always put Federer as the favorite at Wimbledon. And when you really look at it, who's been the best at Wimbledon lately in the last five years? Djokovic. Djokovic is very, very good on grass, guys. He might be at this point. Everybody always wants to give that crown to Federer. Djokovic might be the best grass court player in the world. So he could win, even if he doesn't win the French, if he wins tonight, that's 18. He wins at Wimbledon, that's 19. He goes into the U.S. Open. He does very well at the U.S. Open. That could be 20. That's how fast he could catch him. That's how big this match is tonight. But as we know, uh, Daniel Medvedev does not look afraid to me at all against the top players. I think the, uh, the intimidation of playing the top players for him, he's one of the few players in the world I think we can say this about. I don't think he steps onto the court fearing them. I, I think he respects them. I think he likes them. He certainly does. I, I really like Medvedev. But he doesn't go in there going, oh, my gosh, I'm playing the legends. I don't belong in the same court. I, I think he thinks and he knows he has skills that uh, – Sometimes they just don't have an answer for. Lots of times they don't. Uh, let's see here. Let's read some more comments. Djokovic is not physically 100%. I know he's mentally tough. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know uh, how hurt he is. I think I think he's okay. I, I think he's going into this finals feeling pretty good. Djokovic will always be Medvedev's daddy. Okay, well, you know um, – Right now, the matchup is four to three. Right now, the matchup's four to three. And if I am correct, I think the last time they played, Medvedev won six three six three. So last time they played, Med Medvedev was Djokovic's daddy. So uh, yeah, he's laughing. He's crying out loud because I read I read his uh, thing. So you know what I'm going to do? As we talk here, I think this will be entertaining. I'm going to share my screen, and we're just going to play some highlights and uh, watch some highlights and just talk about the match. You guys – in there and and uh and we can take a look at some of the tennis and i'll come back and read your comments so here we are i'm sharing the screen and this was them at the uh world tour finals and what we can see is they both uh have a very similar game now this drop shot uh one of our commenters omar said you know uh, Medvedev isn't as comfortable at the net. He's not great at the net. I, I think he, uh, watching the highlights though, he's actually a lot better at the net than you guys may think he is. He's pretty good at the net, but I think that Djokovic does have such a great drop shot that going to the drop shot like this right here might be a play. Let's see what happens. Look at that. That was a good setup for Djokovic. So, um, and it seems to me, let me know what you guys think. I think Djokovic has improved his drop shot it's always been great, but I think in the last two years and maybe even the last year, it's gotten even better. So maybe that's an opening. That's that's a thing that can be a, a difference maker is the drop shot. But uh, one thing we can see as we're watching these points is look at the court coverage by both players. It's just ridiculous. And, and Medvedev, for such a big guy, he might be – I mean, how tall is he? He looks like watching this. I'm pretty sure Djokovic is 6'1". If we look at Medvedev, he looks like, look at, there's a the drop shot. We talked about it again. Medvedev came up there and handled that easy. Um, Medvedev looks about 6'5 to me, just looking at this, doing the eye test. And I don't know if there's ever been a better mover at his size. Uh, another thing that Sissipas said, which which I thought was a very interesting comment, I I've been thinking that Medvedev's serve is getting better and better. Sissy Paz said that uh, he's like, man. And, and so think about this. At one point, Sissy Paz called Medvedev a pusher. At one point, he called him a BS Russian. Well, he just played him, and he had nothing but praise for the guy. He said he's very interesting to watch. He said, he said playing against him, first of all, his serve is like returning John Isner's serve. And that was surprising to me because I've been thinking, man, Medvedev serves like it's getting bigger and bigger, but I certainly would have not have ever come up with is it, you know, any kind of near the weapon that uh, that John Isner has. But 
that was what Sissy Poss, who was on the court with him, he kind of felt like, man, return this guy's serve is trying to return like a John Isner serve. So that was high praise. And then when you combine this court coverage that we're watching here, look at this side to side to side, the drop shot. Look how quick he's there and he, a little too much firepower. So as we're watching this point, one thing we can see is that Djokovic gets frustrated. Uh, he is one of the players, one of the maybe the only player besides Nadal who can go toe to toe, and all of a sudden Djokovic is, feels like he's playing a, a more of a wall than than himself. You know, uh, Djokovic gets frustrated. So I think I think for Djokovic to win this match, I don't think he can outsteady. I know how crazy how crazy does that sound? I don't think he can outsteady. Medvedev, I think he's going to have to bring it to him like he is here in this point. Let's see if he can end this point. Look at that. Couldn't put the ball away. Now all of a sudden it's a neutral rally. You see, this is what Medvedev does to you. And Djokovic is going to have to figure out a way to hit through the court. Right now, all of a sudden in this point, Medvedev is back on the offense, back to neutral. I mean, this is – look at this amazing point. This is the kind of stuff we're going to see. And eventually – Medvedev ends up winning that point. So if you're watching these highlights and you are a Djokovic fan, this is scary to watch. Look, there's the classic Djokovic get. Medvedev hits a winner on the opposite side. So um, this is what these guys can do to each other. I, I, I am going to go out on a limb here. Uh, of course, there's no guarantee that Medvedev plays this great Um that we're watching these highlights, he, you know, he might not go out there and play this great that we're watching these highlights. Obviously he's in the zone when we're watching these highlights. There you go. Joker's going to have to do a lot of that coming to the net, but I just have a weird feeling that Medvedev is going to win. I have a weird feeling that Medvedev, uh, I think at this point, Djokovic has a very good serve. I got to watch Djokovic last year. Uh, fourth row Rod Laver Arena play Ronich. And I thought, man, Djokovic serve is, is a real weapon now. It's it's a lot better than it looks on. Like as we're watching these highlights, his serve doesn't look, it looks solid, but it doesn't look amazing. When you're there watching it in person, Djokovic's serve is a real weapon. But I think Medvedev's serve is bigger. Well, we know Medvedev's serve is bigger. He's got uh, probably about four to five inches on Djokovic. So his serve is bigger. Uh, he might be more consistent than Djokovic. The backhand, this is crazy to say because I've, I've been thinking Djokovic has uh, the best backhand in the world. Medvedev's backhand might be a little stronger in that he can flatten it out a little more than Djokovic. The forehand, I'll give that advantage to Djokovic. And the movement, you would think you'd give that to Djokovic, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, one thing I do know is Djokovic is going to have to play more offensive than Medvedev to win. That's that's what I think. And it's always tough when you've got these golden retrievers like we're watching here. You see, they like to react to the action. You see, Medvedev loves to, and Djokovic likes to do the same thing. They both like to do the same thing. They like to react to being pressed. And they don't necessarily always want to be the first one who's doing the pressing. But that's what Djokovic is going to have to do. Like this point right here, he's going to have to do these these type things and play points just like that. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and come back to you guys and see your comments and what you guys think of this. Hopefully it got to play pretty well. Hopefully, let me know how that played through for y'all. Did you guys get to see that pretty good? But I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm going to read some comments. Who do you think is more solid at the baseline based on what you're saying? I, 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 it's, it's so hard to say this because Djokovic is perfect from the baseline and he has 17 Grand Slam titles. He's going for number 18. But just what I've been seeing in the last year, I'm starting to think that Medvedev is better at the baseline, at least as far as he's more consistent. And he's almost doing more impressive. He's like getting out of trouble back there even more impressively than Djokovic is uh, in the last year, I think. I don't know. I just I just feel like his momentum is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Sissy Pass, uh, you could tell when he came off the court, was very frustrated. And I think that he 
uh, was very discouraged because I think Sissy Pass was feeling that this tournament, he started to feel like he was the favorite. He started to feel like this might be his turn. And I think especially after beating the Dow, probably gained a lot of uh, confidence, but then was also probably pretty tired. We know that. But I think when he lost to Medvedev the way he did, I think he, if you watch him in the press conference, I think he's pretty down. I think he's like, man, I'm, I'm a lot further away uh, to this guy than I thought I was. And this guy is a lot better um, and he's getting better constantly. It's kind of the feeling that I was feeling watching him in the press conference. So uh, I just feel like it's Medvedev's turn. I feel like he's going to do it tonight. Of course, I won't be surprised if Djokovic wins. He owns the Australian Open. He's won its 117 majors. Uh, we know that he rises big on big occasions, but uh, I just feel like Medvedev's ready to win his first one. I feel like it, I feel like it might be time. For Djokovic, the backhand slice might be key. Yeah, but what's it going to do to him? I mean, is is that backhand slice of Djokovic really going to hurt Medvedev? I don't know about that. Let's see another one. The backhand slice might be pretty effective. I remember Medvedev sl struggling with slices on the U.S. Open against Rafa. Uh, well, first of all, let me say this. Rafa's backhand slice is a lot more deadly. Djokovic's backhand slice is okay. Rafa's backhand slice is way underrated. He He puts a lot more heavy action on that ball than Djokovic does. Djokovic more punches through it. It's a nice gliding shot, but he doesn't put that fierce action on the ball that Nadal puts on his slice. So I don't think I don't think Djokovic's slice, I think a better slice can bother um, Medvedev and certainly has in the past. And I think Nadal's slice can bother um, Medvedev, but I don't think Djokovic has, he's an awesome player, but I don't think Djokovic has a uh, a slice is going to bother you a lot. Let's see. Medvedev is at his peak now, unlike Novak. Yeah, I mean, we're saying all this about Novak, but in the last year, guess how many matches Novak's lost? Three. And one of those losses was because he hit the ball at the, at the umpire, the lines person, and got defaulted. So he's really only lost two matches in the last year. So he's playing at a pretty high level. So he says, you're right, Rafa's slice seems way better. Let's see another comment. He had everything he tried at the at the tour finals. Yeah, those are the highlights you're just watching. It's going to be like that over five sets. You might be right. I, I'm just hoping, here's what I'm hoping. Uh, I was really excited to uh, watch um, Nyanka versus Jen Brady. And uh, they both came out very nervous. And Jen Brady never got over her nerves and played really, really bad. And that, and that finals was uh, boring, to be honest. It was it was disappointing. So uh, I'm even more excited for this final. And if I get up at 3.30 in the morning and all of a sudden it's an hour into it and, and one player or the other player is up like 6-2, 6-1, I'm going to be so disappointed and, and surprised. I'm hoping that they both go out there and play at the level that they're able to play and win or lose, no matter who wins or loses, I'm, I'm hoping we will see a four to five set match because again, when you look at these finals, this is when you start to have people who don't really necessarily watch tennis decide, well, let's see what this tennis is all about. Let me watch the finals. And if these two players play at the level that they can play at and put on the show that they can do, Tennis is going to gain a lot of fans. People are going to be impressed. They're going to be amazed at the court coverage. They're going to be amazed at the shot making, uh, the drama. I, th I think if the two of these players play at a very high level, it's going to draw out the emotions. You know, We know how Djokovic can get. Djokovic can get fiery. He can bust up a racket. He can scream at his box. He can you know, yell at umpires. You know, Djokovic, um, when he gets upset, he... He can really let it out. And Medvedev is, uh, you know, no telling what Medvedev's done. I mean, remember when Medvedev was playing at the U.S. Open and people started to boo him and he started to tell them to boo more. And then when he won the match, he said, you know what, he, this was this was classic. And, and I actually liked that. I, I liked it. I liked seeing this. He he said, you know what, guys, I was about to give up because I'm injured. And uh, because of you guys basically booing him. He's like, I won the match. And he's like, and so I'm just going to keep winning. And he got all the way to the finals of the U.S. Open. So 
uh, we know that both these players have quite a personality too. So I'm hoping that we see it all. I'm hoping that we see the incredible points. I'm hoping we see a long, uh, a long match. And uh, I wouldn't mind um, seeing a racket bust up. I wouldn't mind uh, Medvedev getting involved with the crowd. We know that Djokovic's crowd is going to be loud. I don't know. Does Medvedev have a, a large, um, noisy fan base yet? I'm not sure if he does. Uh, so look for that. This might be a rare occasion. Remember, usually when Djokovic gets to the finals, what happens? He's usually playing Rafa or Federer, and he is not the crowd favorite. And I think that that annoys him, but I think that a lot of times fires him up and he plays better. Tonight, he might actually have the crowd on his side in the finals. What do you guys think? Who will the crowd be rooting for? Do you think the crowd's going to be more rooting for Medvedev to win his first? Or do you think that they'll be rooting for Djokovic? Especially in Australia, Djokovic can bring that fan base. He's got a big fan base in, in Australia, and they're loud. And so uh, Novak might have the crowd on his side, and, and Medvedev might take ex exception to it, just the way Djokovic does. You know, sometimes Djokovic gets very uh, upset at the crowd and, and eggs them on. They both like to egg on the crowd. I would like to see some of that. Let's see. Um, David says, Aussie crowd cheered against both of them. Will be fun. I lost it. Will be fun to see who they root for. Yeah, be interesting to see who they root for. I think they will root for Med because he's the underdog. There's lots of Serbians in Australia. So, yeah, I, I think it's unclear who, who's going to get the most uh, positive uh, noise out there. So we'll see. Agree, Medvedev is ready, but Djokovic was uh, not playing his best the last couple months. I think he will show up in the Australian Open final. Yeah, I hope you're right. I hope he will show up in the Australian Open final. That would be uh, awesome to watch. So, uh, guys, I just wanted to come on in. Uh, Omar said, yes, I told the group theme is the youngster and can win four grand slams and Medvedev fans insulted me. Don't know what that's about. But uh, anyway, guys, I just wanted to come on in. And uh, if I just want to make it clear. So obviously either of them, them can win. OK, either of them can win. I wouldn't be surprised if Djokovic wins. I'm not going to be surprised if Medvedev win. I don't think there's a clear favorite. But I have a weird feeling that Medvedev is going to win his first Grand Slam. And I think it will be important for tennis. I think one thing that uh, we're all concerned about is even though we love to see the champions keep winning, I love to see Rafa keep winning, I love to see Fed keep winning, I love to see Novak keep winning. But at the same time, it gets more and more concerning. It's like, what, they're 33, they're 34, they're 37, they're 38, they're 39, and still no one can beat these guys. It's getting a little weird and not good, not looking good for the youngsters. So I think it's important for tennis that Medvedev can beat Djokovic while Djokovic is still in his prime and show that the younger generation, the next gen, can beat the legends while they still have game why they're still competing for Grand Slam titles. I think that's important for tennis. And I think if there's one person, the most qualified person to do it is Medvedev. He's the most qualified. He's shown that he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these legends and he's not intimidated. And, and lots of times they don't have an answer for him. So um, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good for tennis if Medvedev can win. First set is super important for both of them. It's the best tennis that Djokovic reaches, it's best for tennis that Djokovic reaches 20 grand slams. Yeah, that would be cool too. If, I mean, what if you had a three-way tie? I don't see that happening. I don't think it's going to finish in a three-way tie, uh, but what if it did? I mean, that would be pretty uh, poetic for tennis if you had Federer finish at 20, Djokovic finish at 20, and the Dow finish at 20. That would be awesome, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think this year is going to be a big determining factor of who gets to have the most. Like Nadal obviously knows he missed out on a big opportunity, not getting to the finals, not winning this because he could have won 21 and then gone to the French and be at 22 and Djokovic would have been stuck at 17. That would have maybe put Djokovic out of the picture for at least holding, holding back for at least a couple of years. And then all of a sudden he's 35 and who knows what's going to happen after that. So 
Um, Nadal missed out on a big opportunity to, you know, get to 21 and then and then go into the French. Uh, so I think it's I think the ultimate um, record is going to fall in between Djokovic and Nadal. I don't think Federer is really going to win another one. He might pull out another Wimbledon. That would be pretty sweet. I don't I don't I just don't see it happening, but it could happen. Djokovic wins the Australian Open and Wimbledon says Irina. Well, that could definitely be. And if he does, now all of a sudden we're looking at uh, 18, 19, going to the U.S. Open. He could easily end up at 20 by the end of the year, and it could be a three-way tie. And then I think if he can pull that off, then he's going to probably be the one who has the most Grand Slam titles. So this is a super important match, (laughs) to say the least. Let's see. Arena, sa- Arena says um, Nadal wins Roland Garros, and that puts him at 21. Remember that, guys. Medvedev wins the U.S. Open. Okay, I think it's. I think everybody do feel uh, does feel that Medvedev is getting really close to winning one. I, th- I think it's inevitable. I think if Medvedev, um, you know, does not get injured and stays healthy, it it's got to come soon. He's just playing so good, and uh, he looks really tough to beat, and he seems. Like he's getting better and better. That's one of the things that that has always been scary about Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic. She's like, how do these guys keep getting better? I thought they were already perfect and they just get better. Uh, Medvedev is doing that right now. U.S. Open, always super hard to predict. Yes, that's true. That's true. But it is super hard to predict. But at the same time, we usually do see a Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer win the U.S. Open. So it's not that hard to predict. The, the whenever you have the big three in the tournament, like this last U.S. Open, throw that out. That almost didn't even count, right? Because Better didn't play it, Nadal didn't play it, Djokovic got disqualified, and then Dominic Thiem and Alexander Zverev, to me, uh, played a choke fest final. I don't think that was like a Grand Slam final. That was more looking like something on the Challenger circuit. So I just didn't really like the U.S. Open uh, men's final this year. I thought the women's final was pretty good, but I thought the men's final was uh, not anything to remember, even though it was a five-setter. I just didn't really like the quality of the tennis. I'm thinking tonight is going to be great quality, guys. I'm thinking tonight is going to be really top-notch. Medvedev is playing better than ever right now. Yes, he is, Pat. Medvedev is playing better than ever. Oh, we got an actual score prediction. We have Igor saying 7-5. Six four three six six three. Djokovic wins, puts a little trophy up there. That's a bold prediction. That is a bold, bold prediction. Let's see. Richie's asking any thoughts in the Americans tennis? Why Americans tennis is down? Uh, we'll not get into that tonight. Let's just stick with the final. And for I like your videos. Thank you. Thank you for liking my videos. In fact, um, you know one thing that we know is going to be a big factor. What did I say earlier? Sissy Poss compared. Uh, Medvedev served to John Isner. I thought that was pretty amazing. And one thing that we're going to do on Monday, on Monday in the U.S. is going to be our first day of the seven-day serve obsession challenge. So you can go to sevendayservechallenge.com. You can sign up. We already have over a thousand people signed up. I think we have like 1,200 people signed up for the seven-day serve challenge right now. And you're going to get seven days of serve training where we're going to go over. Uh, the perfect practice template so you're not wasting your time on the court. We're going to give you the 10-minute toss fix. We're going to fix the number one problem that people have, the pizza move. So I'm going to teach you how to fix to stop doing this. If you do this on your serve, I'm going to teach you how to stop doing that. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to hit a great slice serve, a great kick serve. And if you've never hit a serve over 100 miles an hour before, we're also going to do that in the seven-day serve challenge. It's free. You get free 48-hour access. And if you want to keep lifetime access to it, Make sure you check the the offer out right after you sign up because you're going to have the best offer. You can have lifetime access for just 37 bucks. So definitely go to 7-Day Serve Challenge. Sign up. All right, guys. Uh, final thoughts, final questions. So we're just on fire here tonight. There's so many people pumped up about this match. Right. Young Djokovic, return of serve will serve him well. Yeah. Return of serve. Djokovic, I think that is one thing that Djokovic still has over Medvedev. I think Djokovic still has the best return of serve in the world, and uh, he's going to need it because Medvedev's serve is becoming a bigger and bigger weapon. Uh, Medvedev, very interesting the way he likes to return serve. 
he likes to go kind of way back to the fence like Rafa. So he's kind of got that Rafa playbook where he goes way back. That'll be another thing to look at. How good will Medvedev be at staying way back at the fence, returning Joker serve, and getting into the court and making the point even? So uh, another thing to look out for is, is how good can Djokovic hit a slice on the deuce court and get Medvedev outside of the tram lines and running to the next side? And how good can his kick serve be on the ad side? Again, get Medvedev off the court and, and running for the ball because he's staying so far back. So if he can use his angles while on his serve, he might be able to exploit the fact that Medvedev likes to stand uh, against the fence and, and just keep Medvedev running. But um, it seems like Medvedev's turned that into an art form. You know, it, it, when you're watching on TV, you always think, how can these players who stand way back by the fence not be exploited? How are the other players who we know can serve on the dime can't get them off the court and either serve in volley or serve and hit to the open court and, and get a big advantage? But uh, Rafa and Medvedev and more and more players are doing it with a great degree of success where they can stand back by the fence and it doesn't bother them. They're able to cover the angles. They're able to get back in, into the point and, and do all kinds of things. So, um, but that's, that's a chance for the Joker to, to pick on him there. Hopefully he can do it. Let's see here. What else do we have? Djokovic is in my country, brother. So I have to root for him. Okay, Igor. Well, you know, I love Djokovic. I'd be happy again. Uh, there's lots of players I really, really like on tour. There's, very few players I don't like, and I'd be happy for Djokovic. I'd be happy for Medvedev. So um, enjoy this match. Enjoy this match. And just pray. I'm just praying for more than um, trying to pick a winner here. I am picking Medvedev. But more than that, I'm just hoping for awesome tennis. And I hope that lots of people who um, don't necessarily tune into normal matches are going to tune in tonight and be amazed at what they see. Because these guys are unreal tennis players. And so that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, Tom Nordstrom says, pause review of the seven-day serve challenge. I did it last year, and I'm going to do it again. Goal is to be 10% better on the big rock. Yes, thank you. Tom is one of our best online students, and I appreciate you, my friend. I don't like Joker's attitude. He's been faking injuries for years. I don't know if Djokovic, I think Joke. here's my thing. I was going to get off, but, you know, I want to defend Djokovic on the whole faking injuries thing. Number one, think about this. The guy's been on tour now since he's been a teenager. Now he's 33. So he's, and he, and he almost always wins. So he's going to be playing a lot of matches. And in the beginning, how did Djokovic get his um, reputation of being somebody who calls for trainers and uses the system to cheat and fake injuries? is because in the beginning, he had a legit condition to where he could not breathe on the court. And he was struggling to breathe, and the old, and he needed to call the trainer, okay? And uh, and and then he changed his diet, and he, he figured out his body, and, and, and that went away. And so if you watch Djokovic day in and day out, he's been in a lot of big battles, a lot of five-set matches where he doesn't call for the trainer. Anybody who's going to be on the tour that long, play that many matches, play that physical of tennis is going to have to call for the trainer from time to time. And I think that once you get a reputation of doing something, then every time you do it afterwards, then that's just who you are. You, you, you fake stuff, you know, like Serena, we know that Serena's lost her mind sometimes that one time where she went to the, um, the, the lady in the, the line judge and she took the ball and she said she was going to shove it at her throat. You know, once she did that and then once she went and then when she was playing Miami Osaka, once you do those two things and she's done a number of things, but then after, but just whenever she opens her mouth now, then people say, well, there goes Serena again, you know, so it's whatever you develop your reputation for, um, then every time you do it, even if it's legit, people want to say you're faking it. So I think Djokovic gets a bad rap for that. And I think also that it's just so hard to live up to the legacy of Federer and the Dow. You know, you, you, everybody can't be Federer and the Dow. You know, uh, Federer and the Dow, the show that I mean, it's amazing. Those guys just always say and do the right thing. And it's almost an impossible standard to live up to. So since Djokovic is right there in the record books with those guys, anytime he acts a little off, 
they want to compare him to Roger and and Nadal and say he's not classy. Uh, but I don't think that's that's fair either. Okay, I'm wondering if Medvedev is being ready to win the Australian Open or more likely uh, Theme winning against Nadal at the French. I don't think – I think Theme's got some – He's he's got to go back to the drawing board. Ever since he won the U.S. Open, guys, he's had a tough time. I mean, at the French Open, he did not have the performance he wanted. He got blown off the court at the Australian Open. So before uh, we say Theme can beat uh, Nadal at the French, he's going to have to get his confidence back up. And I think it's a good time that they're going to be going to the clay, you know, here in a couple of months. So there you go. Let's see. They don't like Djokovic because he's Eastern European. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that too. I think there really is. And and uh, Djokovic, uh, Djokovic, I love Djokovic. If you watch Djokovic behind the scene, he's great with kids. I've seen it myself. I went to Indian Wells and uh, he took his hat off and he signed it and he gave it to a kid and put it on the kid's head. He took his he took his towel, signed that, gave it to a lady. Spent a lot of time signing autographs. I've seen him take kids in the court and hit with them. He's given tons of money to charity. When he has uh, lost his temper, he's made up for it. I remember one time he ripped a towel from a ball kid because he was upset in a match, and everybody gave him a lot of stuff for that. And he made a special apology, apology video to the kid, which was pretty nice. Um, when he hit the lady, even though he got defaulted, and he should have got defaulted, you could see – Right. What do we want to look for when somebody does something wrong? We want to look for a remorse. Right. That's how we know they're truly sorry. He right away. You could see his face. He was shocked. He hit her. He went over. Uh, I overall think Djokovic is a classy guy and gets um, I think he gets a bad, bad uh, rap. Medvedev, Medvedev. Medvedev wins in four sets tomorrow morning for me. OK, well, I'm looking forward to this. I'm taking my ball now to predict the match. Okay, who's predict last last second predictions? Put it in in writing, and uh, and then we're gonna call it a night and be ready. I'm gonna be saying my alarm clock getting up, saying my alarm clock getting up. I'm picking Medvedev, rooting for both Fed and Rafa. Hold back their thoughts and emotions on like Djokovic. Yeah, Djokovic lets it fly sometimes. He tells you exactly how he's feeling. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I love to see Rafa the way he is. I love to see Federer the way he is, but I don't want everybody to have to be a carbon copy of those two. It, the tour needs everybody. The tour needs everybody. That's what makes it awesome. Okay, so I'm 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 actually as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing more Medvedev predictions than Djokovic, which is kind of interesting. Which is kind of interesting. So uh, I'm going to leave now. Thanks so much for tuning in. We had a lot of people on. When you leave this broadcast, if you do me a huge favor, like this video so YouTube spreads it around so people can uh, come on in and give their thoughts too and watch the replay. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more videos like this and want to get some serve instructions, forehand instruction, all that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. And we'll probably be back tomorrow at some point, especially if we have a classic final. We'll be back to talk about it. So take care.